Hey guys, Gruz here. I hope you guys are doing good. Today I just wanted to make a little video about HyperCard programs or HyperCard stacks. Now if you clicked on this video, chances are you probably already know what HyperCard is. But in case you need a quick refresher, HyperCard was a program released by Apple back in 1987. It was a very easy to use program that allowed people to make their own essentially make their own software for Macintosh. It was kind of like a PowerPoint type of thing where, you know, you'd have the different slides, except they were called cards here, and each program made with HyperCard was called a stack. You could do anything you wanted with your stack, like they have this built-in programming language called HyperTalk, and that really opened the doors for more advanced kind of stuff that you could do with these. HyperCard was revolutionary when it came out, and it really opened the door for just about anybody to create a stack and share information with other people. Bill Ad Atkinson, who was the creator of HyperCard, he estimated that there was over a million stacks out there. In this video, I pulled up 10 stacks that I want to check out with you today. I'd never seen these stacks before, but to me, they seem pretty interesting. So I thought it would be kind of fun just to go through these and see what they're all about. So the first one I have for you today is called Internet Tour. And the description of this one says, the Internet Tour was designed by the NSF Network Service Center as a general introduction to the internet for the new network user. So this stack came out back in 1991. I don't even think the web was around back then. Maybe it was, but it wasn't anything like it is today. Welcome to the NSF Network Service Center. Tour of the internet. Let us be your guide to the wonders of the mysterious internet. Lick me. Actually, I think that's supposed to be click me, but it's not working. Ooh, a starry night. Oh, the moon's a dude. Let's uh, do a quick tour. The quick R shows you. Oh, the quick tour shows you the introductory information in the stack. You have two navigation buttons. Click on the arrow to continue or click the stop sign to leave the quick tour and go back to the menu. So I think I'm missing a font here or something. That's why it's not rendering it right. Networks. Networks provide people with a quick and easy way to communicate either with individuals or groups of people with similar interests. The internet is a large network and it has connections to other networks, so it allows you to reach many other people and computers all over the world. What you can do on the internet. With an account on a computer connected to the internet, you have access not only to the resources on your own computer, but also to resources on any other internet computer where you have an account. So this is all pretty basic stuff. The internet is the interconnection of many networks throughout the world that speak the same language, namely the TCP IP protocol suite. Internet with a capital I refers specifically to the internet that contains NSFNet, Milnet, and DDN. The heck is DDN? You may see internet with a small i. This can refer to any network built out of the TCP IP protocol suite, or it might refer to networks using the protocol families that are composites for smaller networks. I didn't know the capitalization of the i mattered at all. We're learning stuff here. The internet started with the ARPANET, but now includes such networks as NSFNet, NearNet, and others. So that's interesting that they talk about NSFNet, NearNet, and BitNet as if we already know what these are. I sure don't know what that is. Approximately 1 million people use the internet daily. I bet it's a lot more than that nowadays. The ancestry of the internet is rooted in the ARPANET, a network developed by the Advanced Research Projects Agency to aid in the sharing of information and resources among researchers. The ARPANET, which was made operational in 1969, became an essential tool for remote login, file transfer, electronic mail, and the sharing of information by interest groups. Yeah, that's got to be the original internet. The internet first became operational in 1983 when the ARPANET was split into two separate networks, MilNet and ARPANET, which together formed the internet. The internet has several component networks, which themselves include other networks. And here's a map. Wow. I bet this is a lot different nowadays too. Oh wow, and see, look at this. You can click on each of these to, to learn more about it. Let's check out ManNet, Minnesota. The Minnesota Regional Network, MRNet, not ManNet, <laughs> is an NSF regional network which provides communication between the nationwide SFNet and researchers at the Minnesota Supercomputer Center. I wonder if these things still exist. Minnesota Supercomputer Center, 1200 Washington Street, Minneapolis. 
I love Minneapolis. Here's where the supercomputer is. It's in there. Go get it. All right, next up we got the Song Stack. The song Stack contains buttons that will play 101 popular tunes from classical to folk to children's and more. The songs are played using HyperCard's own harpsichord resource. You may simply enjoy listening to the songs or even copy the buttons to use in your own stack. Uh, song menu. Let's just go right to the menu. Children's tunes, patriotic songs, other music, Christmas music, classical music, folk tunes, hymns and praises. Let's go to some patriotic songs. America. Um, Sp Star Spangled Banner, Battle Hymn of Republic. This land is your land. Yeah, that's a classic. This land is made for you and me. Um, what else we got here? This is my country, America the Beautiful, America the Beautiful. From sea to shining sea. This is awesome. All right, a little bit of Nutcracker Sweet. Shut up. We got the classical music here. Here's a little fur allies. Shut up! Shut up! It's not shutting up, guys. It's just taking over now. Actually, let's go back to the menu. I think, actually, I want to go to the Christmas ones. And oh, Carol of the Bells, that's a good Christmas one. Shut up! Next up, Apple versus IBM. Let's find out which one's better. Which is better, Apple or IBM? Hmm. Hmm. Mm -mm. mm hmm. All right, let's do it. Wrong. Both are the same because software allows them to use the same software products. He a dumbass. Are you a space alien trapped in a human body? Find out today with the Interactive Space Alien Evaluator. This month's Matterson University Hospital Mental Health Center proudly presents a great personal achievement created by inpatient Lester Fontaine. Lester has overcome tremendous personal hardships during his 33 years on this planet. He calls this project, Are You a Space Alien? Are You a Space Alien? by Vox Lim. Click this button first. Are you a space alien? Many of us in the world today suspect that we are visitors from other planets. We know we do not belong here on Earth. Perhaps you do not know exactly where you belong. Perhaps you are an alien here. I can help you discover who you are and where you belong with the Space Alien Evaluator. I can help you discover whether you are a child of this Earth or a child of the universe. I mock, but Honestly, this is pretty dang cool. So yeah, let's get evaluated. I don't have time to read all this, but let's get evaluated here real quick. Page one. Have you ever criticized your reflection in the mirror? Of course. Have you ever studied astrology or the occult? Absolutely. Have you ever awakened crying or feeling extremely fearful? Every time I upload a YouTube video. Do you sometimes chew on ice? Absolutely not. That's disgusting. Would you like to change something, anything about your appearance? Absolutely not. Can you tolerate extremely spicy foods? Oh, heck yeah, I can. Do you prefer sleeping with your windows locked shut? Hmm, you know... I don't lock them on purpose. I lock them so that bugs don't get in. 
So I'm going to say yes. Do you ever awaken feeling more tired than when you went to bed? Yes, because nighttime Jared doesn't care about morning Jared. Have you ever felt sad after looking up at the stars? All the time. Have you ever dreamed you took a trip on a spaceship? Mm, you know, I don't really remember my dreams all the time, but I'm going to say no. Have you ever felt uneasy about eating meat? You know, I don't want to hurt animals, but it just tastes so good. Have you ever fallen in love with a person pictured in a book or magazine? No, I haven't fallen in love. That's a little creepy. Have you ever wanted to learn a foreign language, but found yourself unable to concentrate on your studies? Absolutely. I got ADHD. Have you ever seen a strange light in the sky? All the time. As an adult, have you ever experienced a fear of darkness? No. As an adult, have you ever sympathized with space aliens while watching a science fiction movie or television show? Yes. Yeah, i just seen Avatar. Of course. Have you ever lost track of time? Who hasn't? Do you ever feel dizzy for no apparent reason? Uh, I'm going to say no. It's something you probably want to see a doctor about. Have you ever felt bored and ill at ease when others were having fun? Absolutely. I'm antisocial. As an adult, have you ever worn a science fiction costume? Uh, no, I never do that. Have you ever dreamed about space aliens looking in your window or standing next to your bed? No. Have you ever spoken to a stranger who claimed you look exactly like someone they know? Yes. Have you ever believed you could communicate? <coughs> Excuse me. Have you ever believed you can communicate with animals or relate with them in a special manner? Oh, yes, I used to talk to my dog all the time. If not adopted, have you ever doubted your biological relationship with either your father or mother? No. As a child, were you ever afraid of me and imagined creatures hiding under your bed in your closet? Yeah, I saw the movie Little Monsters. Have you ever awakened and found a cut or scratch in your skin that wasn't there when you went to bed? Absolutely. As an adult, have you ever wished you could become rich overnight? No. Just kidding. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever noticed dogs or cats watching you? Yeah, those little stinkers. Have you ever felt afraid to do something you wanted to do because it might shock your friends or family? Yeah. Have you ever seen people moving or heard them speaking in slow motion? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Do you ever sometimes doubt the ethical or moral integrity of religious leaders? All the time. Have you ever known who the caller was before you answered the phone? Yes. Have you ever felt lonely when you weren't alone? Yes. Have you ever noticed a strange tingling in your fingers or toes? Yes. Do you ever feel like you're living in a zoo or an experimental laboratory and someone unseen is studying your life? Yes. 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 Okay, this is too long. It's too many. Would you like to stop answering questions or simply skip? Yes. Stop. There is an 89% probability that you are a space alien. However, you answered only 37 questions. The alien evaluator cannot be 100% sure of its calculations if you do not complete all 58 questions. Okay. So I'm a space alien. I need to talk to a shrink and I got just the one. Hyper psych. Hyper psych. Let's do it. Hyperpsych. Hyperpsych is based on the famous ELISA program, not a serious psychiatrist counseling program. Don't take this too seriously. Okay, let's visit the doctor. The doctor is in. Please tell me about your problem in a few words. Hit the return key when you finish. I am a space alien. Why are you a space alien? Because Hypercard told me. Is that the real reason? Absolutely. Nevertheless, I detect a hint of doubt. Ooh, you are good. Okay, chances are I'm probably just a human. Okay is okay. I suspect you'd like to do better. Absolutely. I would love to do better. How satisfying is your love life? That's none of your business, you pervert. Please complete this sentence. The real problem is you're pissing me off. I gotta go. I see. I hope you'll tell me all about it. No. No. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at some of these wacky HyperCard programs. Man, I love HyperCard. There's so much wacky stuff out there. Like I said, there's probably a million of these stacks out in existence. These things are super wacky and super cool. Maybe if you guys want, I can do more of these in the future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it to let me know. And make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you soon in the next video. Goodbye.